Uh, ladies and gentlemen, can you please hear me? I see Malifu. Malifu, can you please just um, answer if you can hear me? Yes. Oh, not me. Yes, okay. I can. But I saw that there are two Malifus. I'm also Malifu. Sorry. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Yes, I can hear you. <laughs> Okay, thank you, Malifu. Uh, and then I see Buti. Uh, Dr. Buti, can you please uh, uh, greet us? Do, Mela. Okay, thank you so much, and Dr. Buti. And uh, Meana, can you please um, greet us, if Orebona? Okay, I can. Okay, Meana. Yes, I can. Okay, I can thank you. Okay, thank you, Meana. Um, and then we have Nobushe. Nobushe, can you hear us clearly? Yes, I can hear you clearly. Okay, thank you, um, uh, Nobushe, and. Uh, thank you so much uh, for coming to uh, Shamsa Literary uh, uh, Club uh, book launch for Mama's Little Helper, the book written by Shanin Grady. And Nematha, are you with us? Nematha? Yes, oh, ma'am, I'm with you. Okay, thank you so much, uh, uh, Memata. Um, I would like to welcome all the people who have just joined us for uh, this uh, virtual uh, book launch of Mama's Little Helper, the book written by uh, Shamane Mkwebi. Uh, we are currently uh, experiencing a technical glitch. That's why we have decided that um, me, Shamin Mukhebi, and Ms. Bonjile Chochiani will be logging in with the uh, same phone. Yeah, 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 Ms. Shamin Mukhebi. And please, uh, may you please forgive us all uh, the technical glitch. Uh, the program for our book launch goes as follows. Uh, we have um, open and welcome and introduction of guests. And we have a presentation of the book by Ms. Shamin Mukhebi. And we have Mothers as Readers, which will be done by Ms. Bongile Chochani. And we also have um, Children, Youth, and Books by Meki Humu Dichwe Puchi. Thank you all so much for coming in this dying time of COVID-19. Right now, I would like to hand over to Ms. Shamin Mrebi, who will be doing uh, the presentation of the book, uh, Mama's little helper. Ready. 
Dumela. Dumela. Hey, thank you guys for joining us on this Friday. What a struggle, what a challenge, but we have won. I think that it makes sense that we had these challenges of connecting because the book that I'll be talking about is a book that was inspired by COVID-19. And as we know that the pandemic has brought us here, the pandemic has brought us here. We have had a challenge to connect, guys. Thank you for your patience. But I think it makes sense. Yes, we were supposed to have these connection challenges because we are here where we are today of hosting book launches virtually because of the COVID-19. And it's because of this challenge that we have this book here today. If the pandemic didn't happen to South Africa, this book wouldn't be here. So I wrote this book, Mama's Little Helper, during the first lockdown when the president announced that you know, we need to stay at home. Well, when the announcement came, well, for me, enough, the first two days, I was very excited. I was excited the very first two days because for the first time, I could wake up, not be woken by an alarm. I was excited. Yo, I'm going to rest, sleep as much as I do. And, you know, I was able to do that day one, day two, day three. But then as time started going on and we're in day four, all of a sudden, my children are at home. Lena, I'm sitting there. All of a sudden, our house is becoming very, very small. Our house is suddenly becoming very small. So we had to find ways as a mother. All of a sudden, I didn't know what to do. I didn't know how to entertain my children anymore. The money was no more there. So I decided to say, what it is that I can do as a mother inside the house? Which activities can I do, you know, to make sure that I'm able to pass time with my child? You know, and you can imagine that this is something, just a moment, I'm trying to fix my face. I'm trying to fix my face. Guys, can you hear me? Can you see me? Am I clearer? I see your face and I see your forehead. Oh, my face and my forehead. Do you I mean, I hear your voice and I see your forehead. <laughs> okay, so you see my head and you see my background. Now I can so see far. your glasses. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You know, I'll always appreciate such challenges because through the challenge of us having to do new things, you know, re-challenging ourselves. There are successful stories that we've had through the COVID, and this is uh, one of the evidence. So here am I, it's lockdown, it's day four into the lockdown. We've played all the games that we can play with the kids. We have rested, you know, and now we've got nothing to do. The children are lying around, they are forever on their phones, you know. And all of a sudden, as a parent, I remember that, you know, I have issues with my children, you know. There are things that I need to address with them. And because that I'm always at work, when I get home, I'm tired. And the kids as well, they are always at school. And when they come back, you know, it's, we eat supper and we, and we sleep and we are done. So all of a sudden, we suddenly have 24 hours, you know, without doing nothing. Then the idea came, I, I started, you know, writing this book. And as I wrote the book and, you know, the manuscript is done, you know, and I, I wanted to, to, to practicalize it. So I started, you know, doing activities with Moroka. My son is only five years old. And, you know, I would say he would come to me and he's everywhere that he that kept coming in and in. He said, Mama, I'm bored. Mama, I'm bored. I've got nothing to do. Day in, day out, Mama, I'm bored. You know, and I looked at my pocket and the money was no more. I mean, just three days into the lockdown, uh, the money is not there and the food hey, is going like, you know, I think all of a sudden when we started, the food was like this. 
Now, three days later, the food is like this, the fridge is empty, you know. And then I remembered, you know, that money is not a way to parent. You know, in the good olden days, we used to do activities and through activities, we would learn from each other. I mean, a simple example is how we grew up playing mantra and we used to play mantra. And then there and there, I decided, you know, let me take my manuscript and bring it to life. And then I spoke to my son. I said, you are bored. You're all right. If you are bored, come. What is any activity that we can do around the house? And I told him that my son, no, I'm not bored because I, I want to clean my house. But because I don't have an assistant who can help me in the house, come on board. And I was very excited. He said, Mama, what can we do? You know, and we'll do simple things in the house, you know, that didn't involve money. And before we know it, the day is done and we are ready to sleep. And what I also experienced is that some of the activities were not money oriented because as parents, sometimes when, when we want to do uh, things with our children, we want to wait for the end of the month when we have money so that we can take children to a, a restaurant and, you know, and we can spend a large money but through the birth of this book, I was able to see that, you know, simple activities, simple activities. And those, the, the, the thing that I started with, that the issues that I always had with, with my son, as, as young as he is, at the age of five years, because I'll come back from home tired, agitated. I wouldn't know how to address those issues. Now, all of a sudden, as the hard lockdown is there and me and him we are doing simple activities for once and I'm able to address the issues, you know. And through these activities, you know, the environment is nice. It's a nice, conducive environment. I'm able to engage that, hey, Morocco, by the way, how come when you are done eating your food, you leave your dish like that, you know, in a nice, fun way? And Morocco is able to respond and say, Ish, mama, but I'm sorry, you know, next time I'll do, I'll do better. But before the birth of this book, it was difficult when I saw the dish sitting there in the agitated state that I was, my tone would be very different and it wouldn't be very kind. And, you know, even the aim of me disciplining and teaching my child responsibility, the message couldn't go, go across. So basically that's what the book is all about. And also through the writing of the book, I discovered that parents and children are no more connected because of the way the world is set up. We are busy going to work, coming home late. Children are busy with the activities. You know, some days when you talk to your teenage son, you wake up one morning, sometimes you are shocked at the, at the, at the, at the, the voice. All of a sudden, you are like, are you still my son? You know, so the book aims to encourage that as parents, we need to reconnect with our children, yes? As mothers, as fathers, we brought our children on earth, but sometimes, some days when we look at them, we think that they are strangers. So through this book, the book aims to just, you know, the simple way of reconnecting. TVs off, phones off, let mothers and fathers connect with their children and let us reintroduce each other, you know, so that family relations can be restored. And additionally, the book aims to introduce the simple way of saying parents must also be readers, you know. Children, most of the time, they like to copy parents. And you'd find that sometimes they like to copy negative things. You'll see a child as young as two years old imitating uh, uh, if she's seen his or her mother or father drinking. You'll find them all of a sudden taking a can of alcohol and, you know, modeling it like that. So how would it be that when parents can start reading, you know, every day when you wake up, the child see this paint, paint picture of a parent reading and reading. And without, before we know it, we would see our children reading. So basically, this is the story of how the book was, was born. The book was not born out of something that is, you know, out of this world. It was just, we are bored, an adult and a child, they are bored, they've got nothing to do, you know. And in closing, the book aims to assist parents and children to start 
living life now and to celebrate now. COVID-19 has so far uh, gave us an impression that life will happen tomorrow. You know, we'll go to the park when we are at level zero. Do what through this book we are saying, can we start now and enjoy life now in the challenging life that we are in? I thank you so much. I'm going to hand over to Kahisho, our MC. Wow, wow. Uh, thank you so much, Mnesha Bin Mukhrebi. Wow, I'm, as a mother and as a reader, I'm, I'm astounded because right now we are facing a challenge whereby uh, society has found uh, a way out of blaming. We blame institutions, we blame uh, schools, we blame universities, we blame society for our own children. But as mothers, when it it comes from us, and we take responsibility, as uh, Meshamin has said, to say we are the first teachers of our children. Because statistics uh, show that children who perform well uh, at school are children that come from a reading home. Uh, right now, we are going to welcome uh, Mayor and Bojile Chotani, who is going to tell us about Agnes and Agnes. Bojile Chotani is a mother and a facilitator, a teacher. She is based in Magawu and she's a kindergarten teacher and hosts monthly support group parents for children who are able and disabled. Please welcome Ness Boikile. Uh, my name is Jack Isaac Kalisis. I am Swing Lecho Diani from Bloemfontein. I live around my own. Uh, as a mother, I'm going to talk about being a mother, a reading mother, is very fundamental in this time that we live in. So these days, it's so easy that the children can forget what we taught them yesterday. But through reading, Reading can model and make it easier for them to memorize it. But like the MC has said, I'm only coming to come and walk where they walked and said, like in the olden days, <clears throat> it's part of our culture. We would sit around the fire and then around the fireplace and then the grandparents will narrate stories, folklore stories for us. And then that would lead us to where we are in the night will memorize whatever they said and take all the lessons that they have said. Now, reading in our children, it sharpens their listening skills, it sharpens their concentration level, whereby when you read to a child, she or he can be able to say whatever you said. And then again, it improves their pronunciation or their pronunciation in a manner that whatever you say in your language, your child will be saying it exactly like you did. So it's better if you read more and more in the language that they understand. Now, again, to preserve this heritage through literature, like uh, Charmaine, the reader, the, the writer of the book have said, more and more of reading of this book, it will bring more to the child that she can, or he can narrate the story to his friends without even reading the book. Now, the problem that we're facing today is that as parents, we don't want to read for our children. We want the TV to teach our children, all these gadgets to teach our children. But most of the people that they see on the TV don't speak their languages. So the mother is the first teacher to the child. In our world, the children doesn't inherit anything, but their environment is everything to them. And the environment of books is very important to our children. The environment of encouraging language is very important to them. So now, they, like in the olden days, we were taught the story of Selani Lidim. The story of Selani Lidim, to us, it will always 
trigger something to us that we must not talk to st not talk to strangers. Strangers are dangerous. But luckily, in the story of Selani Lidimu, Selani got rescued. And then us, we would understand that we are not talking to strangers. We might be kidnapped. So that's how we grew up knowing that it's wrong to talk to strangers or open doors to strangers when we are left alone. Now, in this time and age where there is a pandemic, I think reading is fundamental again, very vital and important. Whereby, as a mother, there has to be a time. Like the Rasta has said, there, is a there has to be a time that is put aside in the family time, whereby children read books in different languages. As a society in South Africa, we have 11 languages. So if the children is bought to read in Sichuana, they can learn Sisutu. If they are bought, they can read in Afrikaans, whereby they become linguistic. And then a child who can speak more than one language at the age of 10 can do more things for themselves. So even in business, you're not afraid to talk because you have learned it from reading and you can associate yourself with books. Now, again, now in this time of a pandemic, mothers, please, let's read. When you read, you empower yourself. Women, read when you read you educate yourself and then as a society we know when you have read you can take that knowledge and educate others through it this is my message to every mother now listening and hearing what i'm saying let's read and then after reading we create an educated nation i thank you Wow, I will also like to apologize for that technical glitch. As we know, uh, we are having a problem with our connection. Uh, thank you so much, Ms. Shojani. As you have said, uh, more and more people are reiterating on the issue of uh, oral history being narrated and preserving our heritage through literature. Literature is one of the strongest uh, tools that uh, our children can learn. Uh, always remember that uh, Mama's Little Helper is available in five languages and it's only 120 a copy. Please order yours by inboxing Meshamin Murebi or just calling the number 071-557-3231. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Boji, for reminding us that as mothers, we are custodians of uh, literature. Uh, right now, we'd like to move to uh, Mary Filwe Bahumi, who's going to talk about uh, encouraging uh, teach, teaching as a teacher. And uh, making uh, uh, Rifilwe Bahumi is about 19 years experience in the education center. She started her teaching career in UDIS primary school, where she spent 14 years. She founded uh, Kido uh, Zone Early Learning and Home Center in 2016. Mid 2017, she was headhunted to join Save the Children SA, where she worked as a literature code coach, upskilling and supporting foundation face teachers with reading and improvement programs in home languages and first, lang uh, first additional languages. In 2020, she joined the Department of Education as a subject education specialist. She is she specializes in curriculum related matters for early late, early childhood development and foundation phase. She also contributes to the development of teaching and learning material, which is aimed for the development of learners and reading. She is an avid reader who is passionate about books and reading. She believes that the best way to teach young minds is through stories. She never misses an opportunity to share stories of her own classroom journey, which have been impactful in supporting their works. Uh, we, we hand it over to you, uh, Mer Rifilwe Pahubi. Mer Rifilwe? Yes, ma'am. Um, can you hear me? 
Yes, we can hear you. You can take over very freely. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I greet you all, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. Um, yes, Ms. Chanel has done a splendid job. I think you are great, Ms. Shamin. Thank you very much for this opportunity. Uh, mine is not going to be long, and uh, fortunately, when I thought about what I was going to uh, speak about today, I did not only think about the classroom or teaching, I thought of, of parents as well. So whatever I will be sharing with you today, I mean this afternoon, we'll uh, be talking to uh, our roles as teachers in the classroom and as teachers at home, meaning parents uh, to our own children. Uh, I would like to start about just taking you th uh, through uh, the acquisition of language for our children. First and foremost, a child learns language by listening, and then that will be followed by speaking. Those two happen naturally. A child is not taught how to speak. It's a natural process. Then we come to the teaching part where a child will be taught how to read. And then the last one will be writing. And we all know that reading and writing are interlinked. Are interlinked. A child who reads will be able to write. A child who reads will be able to speak well. Now, from birth to about the age of eight, a child cannot yet read independently. But the process of reading needs to begin from as early as possible up until the child can read for themselves. Now, in foundation phase, we speak about it is the years where a child learns to read. When they get to grade four, children start reading to learn. Now, what can we do as parents, as caregivers, and as the first teachers, or as the first teachers to our children, which are mothers or fathers, or the teachers in the uh, ECD-based centers, to uh, start the process of reading? What is it that we can do? So what I'm going to share with you today is what we call shared reading. Now, shared reading can be done in the classroom. It can be done at home as well. What do we need for shared reading? Uh, before I come to what we need for shared reading, let me just uh, go through the reason why it is important for shared reading to take place as early as possible. Uh, it is to develop critical thinking skills. Reazeva Hore Curricula Moyarona states that we want problem solvers. So if our children cannot think critically, it means that they will not be able to solve problems that they can come across on a daily basis. That is the reason why we do shared reading. Now, what do we need for shared reading to take place? In order for shared reading to take place, we need, it doesn't even have to be a book. We can start with a poster because we are talking about a, a, a four-year-old. We are talking about a six-year-old. We are even talking about a seven-year-old. So what we need, what do we need to be able to do shared reading? We can use a magazine. We can use a poster. We can use any picture that has a theme. For example, we can use uh, a classroom picture in any book where a child can see the classroom setting, the teacher, the learners, the tables, the desk, or it can be any room in the house, that picture. And we can also use books. It doesn't necessarily have to be the book that is at the level of the child. But what is important about this book is it must have pictures. 
Now, what needs to happen during this shared reading moment? Be it is a teacher in the classroom at an ECD center with a group of learners or a parent with just one child. Uh, what can happen is the first thing that you would do is you would want to look at pictures. We call it picture walk. If it is a book that has words or if it is a storybook, there's no need to start reading the book right away. So what you would need to do then is to just take your child through uh, what we call a picture walk. Uh, this is where you will ask questions. What do you see on the picture? What is this? What is that? How many children are here? And you would also give your child the opportunity to speak about anything that they see or think about the picture. Um, the questions that you can ask are the easy questions like those who start with what, who is in the picture, how many people are there, when do you think this is happening? And you can also ask difficult questions that will force a child to think. For example, if it is a picture where it's raining and children are playing outside, you could ask your child, what would you do if you were one of those children? Meaning that you are giving your child the opportunity to think of the situation and to try to come up with a solution. If you are using a book, the first thing that you can do, it's the same as when you are looking at a poster, is the pre-read, the same uh, picture walk. You talk about all the pictures without reading the story. And as you do that, you also allow your child to predict. Before you turn the page, you ask your child to predict what would happen next. After a while, it can be the next day, you read the book for the first time so that the child can hear what the story is all about. You read the story again for the second time. It can be the next day. And then you do a post-read. Post-read is where you would ask your child. Uh, the speaker before me already mentioned that you, you can ask the child to speak about the story, meaning that they tell the story in their own words, and you can also ask questions. Uh, these are the type of questions that you can ask your child. Already at that young age, it's important to ask your child about the characters. Who are the people in the story? This is something that they will be doing when we speak about literature in high school. There's always questions about the characters. There's always questions about the setting. There's always uh, questions about the plot or the theme. Ladies and gentlemen, it can start at an early age. Ask your child, who are the people in the story? How many people are there? Is it a girl? Is it boys? And so forth. Ask your child about the setting of the story. Where is the story taking place? Is it inside the house? Try by all means that it is to the level of the child. It is inside of, is it inside of the house? Is it a church? Is it a school? This is the kind of vocabulary that they need, but we started at a, at a young age using the language that is applicable to them. And then we can also ask them about the theme. Let me go back to the setting a little bit. You can also ask them about the time of the day. Those details will be in the story. Did this story happen in the morning? If it's a story about a mother and children going to town, you could be asking them, do you think it was at night? When do we usually go to, to town? The child will tell you during the day. And then you can also ask them about the theme. What are they talking about? Are they talking about love? Are they talking about kind? Are they talking about peace? Are they talking about forgiveness? Those are the values also that we want to teach our children. And you can also ask your child as young as they are. Remember, ladies and gentlemen, it's never too early to, our children are never too young to be exposed to certain information. 
you can also ask them, uh, what did you learn from the story? And take them through the lessons that the story is trying to teach them. Now, what will happen? Remember, this is at the time that your child cannot yet read for themselves, but you are already taking them through that process of reading. What will happen when you do this regularly with your child? Your child's vocabulary will improve, meaning more ways than DPS is a high. And your child will also be able to use uh, for example, uh, instead of uh, your child saying you see the difference. Instead of saying, uh, if So we speak about this kind of reading developing the children's vocabulary. So they will end up with a rich vocabulary. And when they have a rich vocabulary, what will happen? It will be easy for them to write because they will have a bank of words to use. So you see how reading is also related to writing. A child who does not have a rich, or a child who has poor vocabulary struggles to write. Um, it will also uh, develop, as I've mentioned earlier, a child's critical thinking skills. The other thing that we can do as parents is let us also use opportunities to tell them stories. Tell them stories by telling, not reading. And when you are telling a ch your child your story, go through the same process of uh, asking them uh, deep, uh, higher order questions about the story. Ask them, what did you learn from the story? Ask them about the characters of the story, even if you are telling. And it's also important to be modeling the love of books. Like Mesha Main already mentioned, if they never see their parents reading. And remember, it doesn't, anything that a child, even if it's a magazine and there's a picture, you can read that picture with your child. Just by talking about what is happening in the picture, that in itself is reading. Reading is not only words. Um, the other thing that you can do with your child is to sing songs. Uh, if I can just give you a perfect example, I think it's wonderful when you are, uh, when there's a child in your life who is young and you can do all these things with them. It makes it easier for you to talk about what you are experiencing. Uh, I listen to a lot of music. And one of my favorite uh, artists is Brenda Farsi. So I, I eat and drink and sleep Brenda Farsi. She happens to be her favorite as well, seven years old. I'm sure you all remember this one of uh, Too Late for Mama. Even that song in itself, we talk about it. Now, she will ask me, was the mother late? Why was the mother late? And then we start having a conversation about it. This is what was happening. The mother was going to go fetch water. So even when your child are listening to music, they will be able to pick out that there's a storyline somewhere there. Then the other thing that she would ask me would be, is this talking about love? But why are all songs talking about love? So it's not only in books that we can teach our children the skills that they know. And ladies do not worry, ladies and gentlemen, don't worry about uh, saying that uh, I need to start introducing my child to English as early as possible. It is not necessary. The foundation, once the foundation of that child's mother tongue has been laid, I'm an advocate for mother tongue. I believe in a mother tongue. And as a mother, I always say, uh, I am not responsible to teach my children English. 
But my main responsibility is to teach them their mother tongue. Once the children have acquired their mother tongue and they can speak it fluently, it is easy for them to transfer the skills of what they have learned in mother tongue. Believe you me, they're not going to start from scratch. Each and every skill that they have acquired in their mother tongue, they will just transfer it to the English language. What we want for our children is the foundation. Uh, as a teacher in the classroom who had an opportunity to teach in a multiracial school, I am not lying to you ladies when I say that I have found that the black learners that I taught in that English medium school, those who could speak an African language did better than those black children who were not able to speak an African language. So don't stress about the pressure that we experience outside. Make sure that you give your child the foundation that they need. There's a lot of English that is there. Television is English. So whether you make it a point or not, your children are still learning English anyway. So there isn't going to be an instant where you say, I should have started earlier with English. Your children are learning English on a daily basis from television. But let us take it up on ourselves, not to regret later on by instilling this, these precious languages of ours. Uh, in closing, oh, okay, I just want to go back to... I wrote another one. Whilst you are reading a story for your child, I just want to go back to a, to a book. Pause at times, because we also want to teach them how to think. Pause whilst you are reading in the middle of the story. And you say, I'm thinking, show them that what you have, this sentence that you have just read is making you think of something. Whilst you are reading a story, pause and say, I'm noticing that the dog is doing this and this. So we need to teach our children that reading is thinking. They must pause in the middle of the story. We must teach them that whilst they are reading, they must picture, make imaginations, make pictures in their minds, visualize what they think is happening in the story. That's the word that I was looking for. And you can also, because that's the only way they can learn through you modeling the thinking process. Also speak about what you as a mother have learned or as a teacher have learned from the story. So everything that you would like your children to do, be it at home, always model it, model it, model it. Our children must also know the difference between fiction books and non-fiction books. Things that can happen in real life and things that won't happen in real life. Our children, you can also discuss the physical traits of the characters if there's a picture. And you can also talk about the personality traits. And that too will teach them a very important lesson that uh, as people, it is not really important what we look like, but what is important is how we are on the inside. Uh, I think I have um, come to the end of, <laughs> of my talk. Thank you very much for the opportunity. <laughs> wow, 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 and wow. Um, maybe if this was um, a, a personal uh, interaction, I would say we, sh we should clap for uh, Mayor Refilo Bahumi. 
Wow. Hey, I don't know what to say, but all I can say is that Mary Philip Bahumi, you owe us a seminar. He, uh, I, I'm posing a challenge to the author to say she must organize uh, a storytelling and literature uh, workshop just on the topic of uh, mother tongue. Uh, I remember when I was at uh, University of uh, South Africa and I did English. I did not do English as a first language. I did English as a second language. But because I was taught uh, phonetics in my own mother tongue, I was able to translate it. Like you said, uh, students who learn uh, mother tongue are able to translate any language, be it French or English, Africans, any language. Um, you also touched on the issue of uh, summarizing who, why, when, and what. Uh, is the five W's that we are taught when we do uh, stories. Uh, I, I forgot uh, the other one. Uh, Mary Filler, you said it's who, why, when, and what. Can you uh, please uh, tell us uh, the number five one? Mm, Never it's what, who, and why. Yes, ma'am. Is, is it not how? Is how, yes, is the age. Yes, is the age. Is the age. Thank you so much, Mayor Filo. I still remember when we were taught uh, how to find the meaning of the story by summarizing. We were taught this. And this fundamental reading and writing skills also teaches us to be uh, better readers and, and narrators. You also talk about homonyms, homophones, and synonyms. Uh, today is my aha moment, and I always had, have aha moments when I go to book launches. Some th things that I hear for the first time, I never knew was the purpose of homonyms, homophones, and synonyms. But you taught me is the synage between spoken and written language. To say when a child reads this, you can tell the child that, okay, it's kilapile, it means kisori kitahala. You know, we never knew what does homonyms and homophones means. Uh, thank you so much. You talk about characters and song. Oh, never homie. Thank you so, so, so much for coming. And thank you, Shamine Mokhebi, for uh, organizing. Thank you, the University of Free State, for always being an ambassador for, for learning in our province. Uh, moving right along with our, uh, our program, we call upon Meg uh, Khumu Dijue. Uh, Puti to talk about to talk about youth, uh, children, and and books. Uh, who is Meki uh, Khumudi Chwe Puti? Meki Khumudi Chwe Puti is a faculty librarian at the University of Free State. She's an information professional who is recognized as the import the importance of reading and at early age up to tertiary level. She also has a wealth of experience in working in community libraries, underlying community libraries. She was involved in setting up the programs. Kihu was also involved in developing a block loan books system where schools should borrow books in bulk. Ms. Puti holds an honors degree in library and information science and honors in an honors degree in information and library science from the University of Free State. She is a current chair elect for Library and Information Association of South Africa, uh, LIAESA. Free State at the uh, at the previous chair. Free State at the previous chair of Higher Education Library Interest Group. Wow! Thank you so 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 much, Uskeho. You can now tell us the importance of library because our libraries have now uh, become an information center or homework centers where children come and research their homeworks. Uh, thank you so much and give it up for Meg uh, Humudichwe Puti. Thank you very much. Um, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. 
Yes, I can hear you clearly. Yes, Meg. Hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you for inviting me for this um, event. And I want to say congratulations to Charmaine on the launch of her book. Um, we really, we really are proud of you, and especially as women on Women's Month, it's 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 wonderful. I also want to um, thank my colleagues who are here, uh, who are also presenting. What a wonderful, wonderful presentations we've heard and have learned a lot of things today. And I also want to say. To, to the women, happy Women's Month. Um, okay, so I had to think about what I was gonna going to present now about children and youth, and I had to like, it's quite broad to narrow it down. Um, but before I start, I'm first a mother and, and then a librarian. Um, if I can just tell you shortly my story, of my child, um, I started reading. I saw the importance of reading as a librarian. I started reading to her before birth. And sometimes when I read, my siblings were around me. And you know, when you read, you think the child, you know, the child is sitting there, but she wasn't born yet. Um, I was still um, expecting. And I would read something like, uh, here is a cow or look at the tree or something like that. And then they would just laugh at me. You know, I was in the zone forgetting that <laughs> she can't see the things that I'm saying, look at this and that. But the important thing for me, it I realized that it it bad fruit in as, as she grew up um, because she she became an avid reader, like um, Charmaine said and Refilwe. Uh, all the speakers said, you know, this, the, the, the children look at what you do. And as she saw me reading, she also read. And little did I know what I was doing uh, when she was small. Uh, before she was born, it was doing something. And she, she is an avid reader. And, her, you know, her comprehension and vocabulary is good. She's doing very well at school. So that drove me to 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 be able to realize how important reading is. And that's why I'm so passionate about seeing children reading because I know it does something to them and it, it changes their life and they learn about the world, you know, like she always used to say, mommy, I'm going to travel now. Then she, that means she's going to take a book and read and going around the world. So that's what she meant. So really um, for me, um, that's why I'm here because I, I I want to see a change in our communities and children reading because they are our future our future leaders. Um, I'm going to share two short studies that I I read about. Um, one of them was is in Spain, that was done in Spain by um, Malaga University, and they took about forty three thousand um, learners who were between the age of 10 and 11. And then they were also reassessed. The same students were reassessed again between the age of 13 and 14 using a questionnaire to administer to, to administer this. This was done in 2008, between 2008 and 2009, and then 2011 and 2012. And they also um, assessed the, the overall feeling of, of, of their feelings about school. So when the outcome came is the students, they realized that the students who were reading regularly outside of class saw their grades rise um, at school um, by 0 0.22 points. I don't know how their points work there, but that's that's how they put it. So this, the, this, the benefits were seen from children who were reading a, a full length book, books and novels. And then the other results that they pick up was that uh, the study indicated that uh, a child who read recreational books at the age of 11 and 12, they, 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 their grades become better. And, uh, you know, they become better readers when they become teenagers. 
So for the 13 to 14 years old who read books um, on a daily basis, the score also was quite high when they did a, a liter they did a literacy test on them, and um, they were the, the score was high compared to the students who didn't do who didn't read and who who, who did the test. So um, there was also an increase on those who read short stories at least once uh, a month. And the other stats that were interesting show that the girls tend to read more books than boys. The boys preferred newspapers and comic comic books. And then, um, and then the, there was uh, also a, a, a study from Stellenbosch that um, before I get to that study in South Africa. So those were the studies from Spain and the study was limited to Spain. The other study that was done in South Africa, in South Africa by Cindy Lee McBride, um, she found out that she said that out, eight out of every 10 uh, learners cannot read properly, whether it's in their own language or in their home language. So um, her, her argument is, is that um, uh, decolonization in book publishing needs to be looked at. Uh, and also the policy implementation is something that also needs to be visited in our country. So when they, when they use the polls, they call it progress in international reading literacy study. They found out these are not uh, nice statistics, but I know our country, you know, we are resilient and there's a lot of things that we are doing, but these are the, the statistics. Unfortunately, at the moment, this was done in 2019. It says 78% of grade four learners in South Africa cannot read, 93, and then they break it down into, into the, the, the languages, our home languages in grade four. In Sepedi, um, they uh, it's ninety three percent, and in Setswana ninety percent, ninety eight percent in Savenda, eighty eight in Tosa, eighty eight in Sechonga, um, eighty seven Sezolo, eighty seven Isi Isi in Debele. So um, Nick Sproul from Stellenbosch, he's a, at his university, he's an economist. He said that it's important. He realized that uh, at foundation phase from grade one to three, um, you know, the teachers, the teachers also are not reading. That's how it, you know, they, it affects the, the learners. And then the poorer schools are also text poor. They don't have um, books. And also the other challenge was with that wasted learning time during school time uh, was also a factor. I, I heard Refule talking there that um, also it's, it's we, we should not be quickly to push the, 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 the student into learning a new language. Let them learn in their, in their own, in their mother tongue and then they will switch over. Okay, so now when what what can we do now a solution with all these gloomy statistics of of our country uh, of, of the challenges that we are having as 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 a country it's important that um when reading i think uh, refule touched it nicely she said that uh, you know reading with comprehension teaching our children the vocabulary how to so that they pick up a vocabulary when they read so our children sometimes they just read aloud without comprehending what they are reading and she did mention like you need to they need to pause and and tell the child what is it that you understand about the story uh, what you have read the second thing we we need to monitor the trends uh, at least maybe every five years to see where our country is so that we can do something if there's no movement and if there's movement that's great but it, it will help us and then the next the other thing that we can do um 
the universities also need to teach reading as a process, that it's a process um, that involves decoding and understanding. So um, that's another area that the universities can look at to make sure that, you know, the teachers are know that reading is a process that they go and impart that in their in their schools and then we, uh, the the other thing is uh, in service training when they do in service training what is it that they do at the school so this is where the, the that they can start doing book clubs reading groups you know to encourage to bring the culture of reading in the school it must be part of their in service training Maybe some are doing it, some are, maybe some are not. Um, but if we all do it together, we'll get great results. Also, the school environment is, is very important. You know, the, 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 the principals need to, sub, to be supportive in, uh, to inculcate the, the, the love of reading and the teachers. And this is where the schools can forge partnerships with libraries. There's libraries in every community. And we are always willing as librarians to go in there and work together with schools. And I'm sure the schools also want that, but it's a matter of, you know, doing it. Um, I, the other thing is uh, our strategies in schools. It's, it's part of that, you know. Do you have a reading day? Is there a reading day at school? Are there oral stories told? Have we called our communities to come and tell stories to children so that they enjoy reading and even can start writing these stories? That's how you teach them to write as we are writing skills. And then um, the last point is that our home environment, I know Charmaine touched on that and Sibongile and Rifilwe. Our home environment is that the parents also need to read. We cannot leave it to the teachers and the librarians. Everybody must get involved in the community. So if, if a parent cannot read, uh, there are children that go to school in the home. Those older ones can teach the younger ones to read, you know, and um, in that way, we don't break that cycle we, of, of reading. And case, in case at end, there was a very, there is a very successful story that they are doing this. You know, they create literacy. They call them literate families. They they do oral stories. They they involve the community in storytelling, um, and they see improvement in in the children's in the children's life. So when I bring it to our our young people, lastly in in the university setup, you find that. Uh, it, um, our, because our children are struggling to read with comprehension. Um, sorry. Our children are struggling to read with comprehension coming to university. At the university, um, there's a, specifically for our university, there's an academic literacy program where when the students, um, you know, admission, uh, the, the, what do you call it? They don't do well in the national or they don't pass the national benchmarking test. That is a requirement by the university to, to enter for your degree. So if they don't do well, they have to go through this academic literacy program where they they starting to they give the students books to read and that is supplied by the by the library so the student starts reading again and it's a challenge because some of them come with challenge of not knowing how to read and then they have to start learning how to read again from at university to 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 be able to understand what they are studying because that's why we also have problems with our metric results because the students don't read with comprehension. They don't. It's not. It's they're not. They're not uh, stupid. They are not. You know. Um, I don't know what's the right word, but it's because they don't read. Then they don't understand what they are reading when they read the con the question paper because of comprehension. There's no comprehension in what they're reading. Then they fail. It's not like they don't know the answer. You understand? So um, so then they come to the university and they struggle 
That's why they have to go into the literacy program to bring up their literacy level to be able to to get into the university program. And also sometimes their points, they come with low points. The admission point score is very low. They have to go to an extended program. So that's like another waste of another year. So if we can catch our children at a young age, when I, 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 I summarize, uh, catch our children at a young age, teach them to read, um, work together as a community, libraries, universities, mothers, teachers. I think we can reach very far. We can improve the statistics, these gloomy statistics that I, I, I read, because we don't want them. We are doing better, but we are doing good, but I'm sure we can do better as a country because it's a reality. It's a reality in our country. And I believe uh, books that are written by Charmaine and all the other people are great help in our community. And these sessions that we are having, it's also, um, what do you call it, awareness to our people. Thank you very much. Yo, thank you. Uh, thank you so much, Maggie uh, Humuditre uh, Put. Wow. I was just telling uh, Shamin right now that this is the most uh, comprehensive and informative book launch I have ever, ever been to, especially of uh, uh, basic uh, education. Uh, thank you so much, uh, uh, Meputi. Uh, you mentioned uh, decoding and encoding. I still remember those words I learned from uh, when I was doing uh, my first year of political science at uh, University of the Free State, when I was doing communication on a while, to, to say uh, what is decoding and encoding, uh, understanding and comprehending. Uh, normally, our children speak the language without uh, content and not understanding. Like they read just to answer questions, but they never read to comprehend what the writer is saying, uh, how these things were said and when these things were said. Uh, thank you so much, University of the Free State, and thank you, uh, Charmaine, for uh, this book launch. Uh, thank you to all the speakers who have been here. Um, you also talked about a uh, unity of government and stakeholders. This is so important. Department of Arts and Culture, Department of uh, uh, Recreation, everywhere we should encourage reading and learning. Uh, thank you so much to all the speakers. Now we're moving on to questions and answers. Uh, do we have any questions and answers uh, from the people who are logged in? Because I see we have people from Botswana who, have, who are watching us on Facebook. And we have people uh, around our society and we are very grateful for that. Do we have any questions? Please just uh, lock in your mic and then uh, speak or raise your hand. Any questions, inputs, answer, message of support? To all the speakers, not only to the author. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the question I would have to the MC is to say, uh, where do you want to see this book? In, uh, oh. Okay, okay, Mamma is in. Mamma, can speak. Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yes, Hello? I can hear you, Mamma. Okay, yes, it's just the message of encouragement to the author. And I'm really, really impressed, uh, especially by what Mary Filo said and Melkim Khumudijwe about the learning of language in the early ages. I didn't even know that at university level, if you are lagging behind in language, you have to go through a program where you have to be given books 
in order that you can uh, catch up. So it's really, really important because I'm also in the Department of Education and um, uh, we are seeing these challenges that learners don't really know how to read at a, at a primary level. And we are facing um, serious challenges because they are being uh, promoted or promoted to, to the next grade just because of age. And when, once they get to metric, then it's a, it's a problem we face. We are sitting with a big problem. So yeah, I, I really love this, that we must encourage uh, learners to read from a, a, a very young age and to encourage parents at home to hold hands together with the teachers. It's not just the teacher's work for to teach learners how to read and to give them lo the love for reading. That is a, it's a partnership thing. We must encourage learners to love books, especially now that we have uh, the, the libraries. It's free to create a card, to create a library card. So it's, it's we must really raise awareness in our communities that books are there for free, they are available. Let's go and read, let's read for our kids. Let's make uh, kids love reading more than anything. So it's really an eye-opening session, this one. And uh, I really appreciate it that we are getting more books now in our languages, not just in one language, so that we don't overemphasize one language. So I really love this. Yeah, I, th I wish it can get to, it can get widely spread to other communities, like to, to the parents as well. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Mema uh, Lifu. Uh, like I said, this, is, this was not just, a, it was just an introduction of a seminar. The information that we got today is not just an information that uh, is supposed uh, to be left here is an information that is supposed uh, to be a worldwide seminar, maybe provincially and then nationally. Uh, thank you so much, University of the Free State. Uh, thank you so much uh, for Neshamin for writing the book. And thank you to all uh, the speakers that have been here. Neshamin's uh, beads. Uh, uh, Mary Shamin will connect you her way she was dressed. Uh, she looks so beautiful. She is so beautiful. She is dressed by a uh, detective hall. Maybe when you need the contacts so where you can get the piece, uh, you can contact her. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for today. To do our official photo thanks, uh, I will call upon Memali Fumo Posho from a uh, University of the Free State. Uh, to give us a vote of thanks. Memalifu? Um, uh, thank you. Uh, Malifu. Hello? Hello? We Hello, can hear. Oh, you can hear me. Okay, yes. okay, okay. Yes, yes we can hear you. We can hear you, Memalifu. Okay, friend. I was wondering, like, uh, Memalifu, my friend, the order. The hand is gone now. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Do I need to show myself on the video also on the thingy key? Please, it's Women's Month. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Wow. Hi, this. Okay. <laughs> Hi, colleagues. <laughs> okay. Um, a very good afternoon to you all. Uh, for telling the truth, it gives me a great pleasure to give vote of thanks for this event, and then thanking you, uh, Kahisho, for the warm welcome to our guest, and then uh, secondly, thanking our author, Ms. Shamane, for honoring our invitation with your inspirational thoughts for all the mothers in on this Women's Month. Um, I listened to whatever the speakers were saying and like for telling the truth, I, like, I was inspired as a young mother also. And then thinking that like, okay, fine. I think now um, 
teachers and in, in librarians and authors who write in African languages should like collaborate so that like we can have more of book launches in our communities so that we can teach like uh, our kids because one thing that I can tell you um, as much as like there are, so, there are so many kids who will love to read and who like to, who, who, who will want to know more but for the fact that they don't know where to go they don't know what to do we ended up having uh, a community of youngsters whose talents are just like wasted and then the other thing I would also like to thank our panelists, uh, Ms. Bongile, Mary Fille, and Kiho for your insightful contribution on this topic. Our technical team, Nambita and Marcus, for making sure that these events become a success. And then lastly, to our audience who made time to come and attend. Without you, this event was not going to be a success. Thank you, colleagues, and have a wonderful afternoon. Uh, wow, thank you so much. Uh, the book is 120. Uh, you can contact uh, Meshamain. Thank you all for coming and may you not only do this year. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Meshamain. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Oh, I'm sorry. 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 I